as a little boy, uh, there was never a moment in which I felt disconnected or not part of something or not being cured for and loved. And that's why the uh, residential school experience was so um, uh, devastating. In the year 1946, uh, my uh, mother brought me to the school. There was not once anybody explained to me, you're going to go to this place because, or, or we're going to come and see you often, or even though we're leaving you, I love you. There, there was just dead silence. And, and as I look back on it now, I'm, I'm starting to think of the trauma that my mother also went through. From the very entry into that system, it, it was harsh. Uh, you were punished for every contravention of the rules or not understanding them or not uh, following orders. And that translated right through to the classrooms, to the early teachers that we had. They were so cruel. And actually, that's why I'm deaf. I'm both ears, I can't hear. Because we got cuffed in the ear so often. One of the really dreadful things in my that I remember about being so lonely when I got to school and I'd get into my cover under my covers when it was bedtime and cry and cry and cry and you couldn't cry out loud so you had to try to contain it, right? Until I couldn't cry anymore and then I'd sort of fantasize about being home, being with my family. One day I was so hungry we had gotten up and we we done we said our prayers two or three times already by then, lined up, fixed our beds, did our chores, lined up for our, uh, breakfast. My bowl of uh, porridge had these little black things all around, dancing on top, top of the porridge. We'd have showers. They'd usher in 40 kids at a time in these showers. And these people would come and probe you around the genitals and uh, paint you with this white paint and other coal oil or whatever they were using. It was just really um, dehumanizing, uh, uh, embarrassing, belittling. I left there, I was totally broken. I was totally despondent as a young man and I graduated, they shoveled me through the grades and I stood at the top of those 15 steps and I looked out. And I realized I had nowhere to go, no place to go. No sense of value, no sense of purpose. This is a time when a young man should be all excited about his whole life ahead of him. And I'm thinking, oh my God, this is it.